Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about cat scratch disease. You might have heard of this as cat scratch fever, but cat scratch disease is an infection caused by the intracellular bacteria known as Bartonella pencillae, which is a gram-negative bacteria. Here is an image of that bacteria. Now, this is why this can uh, this disease can be referred to as Bartonellosis because of an infection with Bartonella. Now. Cat scratch disease, as its name implies, is that it is cat to human transmission. That means that we can get cat scratch disease from a cat through a scratch or a bite. Now, cats are the natural reservoirs for Bartonella hensile, but fleas are actually a vector of transmission. So fleas can actually pass Bartonella hensile from cat to cat. So if our cat is an indoor cat that has never been outside, that's never been exposed to uh, fleas, it's less likely to carry this bacteria. Now, when a human does get infected with Bartonella hensile through a cat scratch or a cat bite, that bacteria, the Bartonella hensile, will invade the endothelial cells in that person. It will lead to an acute inflammatory reaction it leads to the activation of a pro-inflammatory cascade, which will cause some of the symptoms we're gonna talk about in the next slide. So what is the clinical presentation of cat scratch disease? One of the biggest ones is a skin lesion. This makes sense. If we get bit by a cat or scratched by a cat, there's a lesion, but there's a particular lesion with cat scratch disease, and it occurs generally three to 10 days after inoculation of the bacteria. It leads to a fascicular or an erythematous or a papular lesion. And this lesion will stick around for about one to three weeks. The lesion looks like this. So in these pictures, we see possible cat scratch here, and we get these little papular type lesions. This is the characteristic look of the skin lesion in cat scratch disease. Now another big symptom that we see in cat scratch disease that usually is the defining symptom in this disease is regional lymphadenopathy. This usually occurs two weeks post inoculation. So after about two weeks uh, after the individual has been inoculated with the bacteria, we start to see this regional lymphadenopathy. It is proximal to the uh, inoculation and it is tender. So we generally, if a cat scratch or bite occurs in the arm, we can see this tender proximal lymphadenopathy, usually in the axillary nodes. So we can see in this picture here that we get this tender lymphadenopathy, axillary nodes proximal to the inoculation. So this is a key um, presentation in cat scratch disease as well. And the third most common symptom is a fever. That's why cat scratch disease is considered a febrile lymphadenopathy, fever with regional lymphadenopathy. And if you see an unexplained fever in an individual, perhaps they have cats, think about this as a possible cause. Now, other than these three most common signs and symptoms, there's also a, uh, certain instances where individuals can have a disseminated disease, a disseminated cat scratch disease, and is unsure about the pathology, the pathophysiology as to why this happens, but a subset of patients can get a dissemination of their cat scratch disease, can lead to hepatosplenomegaly, so an enlargement of their spleen and an enlargement of their liver. They can get retinitis, an inflammation of the retina in their eyes, and they can also get encephalopathy. So again, this is this occurs in rare instances, but it can be caused by cat scratch disease or can be a dissemination of the cat scratch uh, illness. But generally, in most cases, in most often, it is a self-limiting disease. So generally, patients only get skin lesions, regional lymphadenopathy, and fever, and it often is a self-limiting disease. So how do we diagnose and treat cat scratch disease? 
diagnosis involves serology. We look at IgM and IgG levels. IgM and IgG serology has low sensitivity but a high specificity. So if we see IgM or IgG antibodies to Bartonella henselae, we can affirm that they have a diagnosis of Bartonellosis or a uh, diagnosis of cat scratch disease. PCR can also be performed to look at um, DNA or genetics involving B. henselae. Lymph node biopsy can also be performed, although this is generally not required, just because if we can see the history and get good serology um, and a possible PCR, we may be able to make the diagnosis. Treatment is generally supportive. Oftentimes, this is a self-limiting disease. We often leave it. We are we provide supportive treatment. However, if there's a lymphadenitis, so if we get lymphadenopathy, um, if it's a moderate to severe, if the patient's very ill, or if the patient is immunodeficient, we want to treat this. We want to treat it with azithromycin. Azithromycin for 10 to 14 days. And if this is a disseminated disease, if it's a severe case of disseminated disease of cat scratch disease, we want to give azithromycin or doxycycline with rifampin. So that's the only difference. We add rifampin or we use um, doxycycline and rifampin for disseminated disease. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on cat scratch disease. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.